Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the first expansion to Istanbul. This is Mocha and Bakshish. I am a fan of Istanbul. I think it's an excellent game, and I have in fact already reviewed the second expansion to this game, Letters and Seals some time ago. I happened to play them out of order, uh, and I very much enjoyed that expansion. I thought it mixed up the game in a really neat way. So I've now been able to go back and play the original expansion, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. It introduces coffee as a new resource, and it's going to give you four new tiles out there that you can go to and take actions. I'm not going to be showing you how to play the original game. You can check out our video for that. But if you know the game, you're curious about this first expansion, you are in the right place. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here's what the game looks like set up for three players with the Mocha and Bakish expansion mixed in. You'll now have a 5x4 grid instead of a 4x4. So there are four new tiles in here that I'll go over in one second. And the objective is now to get to six of the rubies, no matter how many players are playing. So the tiles start with 17, and they're numbered 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's uh, go ahead and go over those so you understand what's going on and what's new in the game. So this tile, the uh, roasting plant, is going to have three powers that you can do, and you can even do all three. They're going to get you the uh, coffee over here, and you could do them all, meaning you could earn up to six at the same time. The top power, pay two lira and take two. The, bot, the, the middle power there, pay any one good and take two. And the bottom one is discard a card, either one of the new cards from the guild hall here, or one of the original bonus cards, and then take two. Uh, 17 is that one. 18 is right over here, and that's the guild hall. The guild hall, when you go there, you are going to do a few different things. You'll take one of the new tokens, you'll draw two cards, and then you are going to, from your hand of these cards, discard one. Does not need to be one of these two if you've got cards from before. Now these are going to be a brand new thing you can do at the beginning of your turn. Normally at the beginning of a turn in Istanbul, you move your stack of tokens and then either drop one off or you end up, or you pick one up, you take an action, so on. Now, instead of doing all of that, you may simply play one of these cards, do everything it says, discard the card. You don't move, you don't have any encounters with these characters, any of that. And these have, like I said, very strong power. So for example, this one here says, move your merchant uh, and any number of your assistants to the fountain, then take another turn. Normally that's a waste of turn. If you do it through this card, it's a normal turn. This one says, pay 15 lira and take the next ruby from the gemstone dealer, which is up here, uh, or, uh, yeah, from the gemstone dealer. Then you take one coffee per ruby that you have. So if I had 20, I would pay 15, I get a gem, and then I get five coffee with the five remaining lira uh, uh, I have. So again, extremely powerful, but that is the entire turn that you are taking. Uh, next up after 18 is 19 right here. When you go to the tavern, you do one of three different powers. The top one says, pay two of the coffee, put out the barrier somewhere on the board between two tiles. So let's say I would put it, uh, let's say here between these two. Take the power of one of the two tiles right here. So I could do that or I could do that and max out my green resources. And then you are going to take this tile and keep it. And the other players may not cross the barrier. You may. You have this. The other players may not. And lastly, we have... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I have to explain the other powers here. So that's the first one. Second power. You are going to pay a number of coffee as required by one of these two stacks of tiles with the values, the amounts needed going up, just like every other stack of special tiles here and then you're going to get a special power. Obviously, you can only have one of each of these. This one over here says when you have an encounter with these characters out on the board, you don't pay the normal two lira. And this one says when you move, you may, instead of moving one or two, you can move in a straight line as far as you want to. You can still not cross the barrier 
unless you're the one who has the token for the barrier, meaning you're the one who placed it. Lastly, you're going to pay, if you want to, four coffee, the resources listed, in this case, three yellow, and then you're going to take a gem from any one of these three places. Once that's done, you flip this over, and then the resources are one of each, not including yellow. So, and then once it's done again, it'll flip over and so on. So, that one is going to get you a gem just by mainly trading in that coffee. The final location is over here, the coffee house, which behaves very much like the gemstone dealer and the Sultan's Palace. You just pay an amount of coffee as listed, in this case six, take the next gem. The next player to go there would have to pay seven, eight, nine, and so on. And like I said, the objective is still to get to six of these gems, but now it's six no matter how many people are playing. That number used to adjust depending on the player count. There's also now a new stack of cards here that you're going to shuffle into the cards. And they'll have new abilities, of course, all having to do with uh, coffee. So you'll see new things here, uh, you know, like get two coffees straight up, things like that. Some more manipulation of what's happening. Again, you shuffle them in. And then you've got one new character here that you can encounter. The uh, this little coffee trader here, when you go to them... You're going to get one, and then you either pay the two lira normally, or you give up a resource, and uh, you keep this. So there you go. Those are all the new pieces that you are playing with. Everything else in the game would stay the same. You are still trying to collect money, collect resources, find ways to manipulate the board in order to earn those gems, those resources. But of course, you've now got the coffee in play and some extremely powerful things like these cards and this tile that you can do in order to earn gems more effectively. So there you go. That's all there is to this expansion. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. That's the expansion, expansion number one. Let's talk about that. I, I, I enjoyed the expansion overall. I think it's a strong expansion. It's going to do its job well, which is to revitalize a game that perhaps you are growing a little bit tired of, right? A game's gotten stale for you. You want to inject some new life into it. This will do that. So will the second expansion. And... Uh, I think between the two, I do still like the, the second one a little bit better because I think it's a little more different from center than this first expansion, which makes sense, right? The, the more expansions they make, the, likely, uh, the more likely it is that they'll get a little weirder, a little more uh, different. But let's dive into it. So thematic ties. There's a new resource at play. Uh, but it doesn't feel that exciting. Now, again, it, this might have gotten a thumbs up, a full thumbs up here, if I hadn't played the second expansion. But that one feels more thematically interesting. The main twist in that one, Letters and Seals, being that you are running around town delivering letters. And it just requires you to be in specific places. If you pass by that place or, you know, go there, you cash in a letter. You've delivered a letter. I like that. This one is just another resource. With new implications, yes, but it's just one more thing. Could have been anything right now. It's coffee. Okay. Uh, so the theme's fine, but it's not exciting. Doesn't uh, necessarily, in and of itself, revitalize the game for me. The aesthetics are very good. They are in line with the original game. Everything looks very nice, so no problem there. Replayability. There are now... More avenues to victory, uh, and you definitely don't want to ignore coffee completely. It is very strong, so I like that. That does its job. New thing, uh, new thing you don't want to ignore, new thing you want to play with, it's in there. Some people might see that as a negative, the fact that, yeah, there's a new concept of play, but you can't really ignore it. And I, I, I would say you probably don't want to ignore it. That's going to be tough. But um, I don't have a problem with that. That's part of the game now. You know, if you put that expansion in there, you need to deal with coffee and, and uh, utilize that to its full extent to, to help you win. Game length. Uh, it's about the same as the original game. This is still a quick game. You know, it's it's got a really nice ratcheting tension. Uh, getting to six gems feels... 
uh, visceral. You know, it's it, I enjoy the the game length here, and this does not mess with that. You know, and it even gives you a couple of moments where you're doing these. Big swingy moments, you know, where you're going, oh, look at all this coffee I just collected. I'm going to pay all this money and do all this stuff. I like that. Uh, ease of play. One, it's about the same, but one interesting thing is that the game with this expansion in it is no longer language independent. There are now those cards that require you to read them. They happen to be in English in my copy here. So if you were... You know, playing a copy from somewhere else, I'm assuming those cards would be in that language. But it is interesting. It's a game that you can no longer really play in a, in a group that speaks different languages that might not be able to read cards anyway in, in other languages. So, just something, something to be aware of, you know. Lastly, we're going to talk about tactics and strategy. And uh, as far as that goes, there are definitely new options to take, especially if other players start getting in your way. I think that feeling of, oh, you're everybody's ignoring uh, the gemstone dealer over here who needs money. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go make money, gamble and make money, do this and make money, go over there. Because everybody else seems to be focusing on other things. I like that ability of reacting. It's very tactical, reacting to what folks are doing and choosing a path without resistance. And it doubles down on the feeling of the game being a race, a race to six gems. Uh, finding your avenue and whoop, zooming down that path. You know, I, I enjoy the way this feels with the expansion mixed in. Uh, the blocking is interesting, especially when you are playing with a random setup. You could, the one I showed you there is the suggested setup from the rule book. But you can shuffle up all the tiles that make up the board and lay them out randomly. If that happens with players that are um, very well versed in the game, you'll they'll find possibly combinations of tiles that are near each other and can be exploited effectively. That blocking rule of you know putting that between a couple of tiles and blocking them off is an interesting tactical decision now that you can use to slow somebody down. Again, it all doubles back to it being a race. You want to throw something in someone's way. I like it. Uh, it's interesting. I might not do it necessarily all the time, but it's one of those choices that I'm glad is available. So, neat stuff. So, there you go. That is uh, what I thought of the expansion. My bottom line is as follows. Less distinct than the second expansion, Letters and Seals, this still offers many new avenues for clever play if the original game is growing stale for you. This is going to get an 8 out of 10, therefore it's going to get a seal of approval. Uh, there you go, that is Istanbul, Mocha, and Bakshish. Uh, this, of course, you're seeing here is the big box, which includes the original game in both expansions. An awesome product, by the way, very well made very well put together, but if you are buying them individually, you already had the base game, then I certainly recommend the expansion. And the other one as well. Go check that review out so you know everything that's out there for this. That's it for me, everybody. Again, seal of approval for the first expansion. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.